Um, uh, so look, let's get, get crack on with this one. Today, I want to help you grow an unstoppable, what an unstoppable lead generation machine for your recruitment business. Now for my own business, I've tripled um, our revenue each of the last three years. So tripled the size of the business, tripled the, the revenue of the business each of the last three years. And I've got to tell you, a big driver for that growth has been the success that we've had with webinars. Now currently we average about 8,000 webinar registrations uh, registrants per month, um, mostly on autopilot. So not for this particular, 2-5 Tribe is a closed group, but some of the public ones that I run, 8,000 webinar registrations each month. Our strategy to achieve this growth has been a combination of social media uh, and webinars. So look, I'd be really, really, it'd be really mean of me actually not to show you how you can do the same for your recruitment business, and that's what I want to do today. So look, what you're going to learn today, let's just get right into the nub of what it is. In this webinar, I'm going to show you how webinars work, why they work, and how to create your own webinar campaign to support and promote your recruitment business. And then finally, as promised, I'm going to lift the kimono, I really hate that expression, um, and reveal my top 16 uh, proven webinar tips and tricks to ensure that your webinars rock, okay? Interested? Do me a favor, if you're interested in that, just type into that chat section, yes, Roy, get going. Um, and listen, whilst you, um, uh, yeah, whilst you, you're, you're kind of like listening, I want you to actively participate. I haven't got Dee in on this call just yet. She may be joining us uh, later on, um, but to handle some of the questions and stuff that you guys might, might hit, but just throw them up there anyway. But whilst we're waiting, I'm really interested um, in your experiences with webinars, all right? So whether you've run your own webinars, whether you've attended webinars other than mine, um, and what your experience has been, good, bad, indifferent, what you felt. Um, and if you are thinking about running webinars, uh, nice one, Daniel. If you are thinking about um, uh, webinars and, and running them, what your biggest fear or challenge is, why you haven't done it already, what's stopping you from pushing ahead? Because I want to try and deal with as many of those today and maybe in the next session that we do. So look, um, let's start from the beginning. What is a webinar? Uh, good, okay, I'm getting loads of yeses in. Valerie, great. Richard, yes. Anna, yay. Daniel, yes. Okay, good. All right, so look, loads coming through, so thank you for that. Um, what is a webinar? Okay, what is a webinar? It's such a weird... I remember being asked this question. It's like, oh, Roy, can you do some webinars? And I, I to be honest with you, I literally had to Google it because I didn't know. Um, and when I Googled it, they told me webinars combine web and seminars. Like, oh, it's a web seminar, a webinar. Um, but you combine those two, you create a live online lesson or a class that hundreds, thousands of people can watch simultaneously. All right, so we're doing one today, but you know what? This is a, a closed group. Uh, I can I can publicize these types of webinars and I can reach an audience of thousands okay and I'm going to teach you how to do that uh, literally reach an audience of, of thousands and um, people watching it simultaneously Now, webinars are really really powerful tools they boost your credibility your leadership status within your niche um, and they very effectively generate red hot client and candidate leads for your recruitment business that's what they can do, all right? Now, a quick point of uh, this, you know, kind of not in the training, just something I thought about. Not everybody, your clients and candidates, will understand the term webinar, okay? I know it's, it's kind of, I mean, like me, I had to Google it, right? So if your clients and candidates don't understand that term, just tell them it's an online uh, training session or it's an online presentation or uh, you know, it's an online class or whatever it is that you're doing, uh, you know, an online advanced training session uh, is a really, really good way to do it. And um, let's have a look at some of these uh, comments. Richard, we've attended a few webinars both here and overseas, also looking to do our own, so just not really sure where to start. Richard, it's a great place and a great question to come up with. Anna, I've used webinars in my previous work role as we were a remote team based all around Europe. Very, very effective. 
uh, for getting work done. I'm going to broadcast that one as well. Um, uh, they are really effective, Anna. It's good that you've used them uh, and you've seen the power of them just internally, all right? Internally is a really, really good thing, but externally too is good. Hi, guys. I decided to have my own connection on so I can chat to you all too. Nikki, great to have you on board. And that you are actually that Richard's got a voice and you've got a voice too. All right. So, look, um, I've talked about what is a webinar. Let's. Uh, uh, if I can get my slides back, there we are. Um, why a webinar? Okay, so why webinars? Now, a knowledgeable speaker, okay, a knowledgeable speaker giving a well researched PowerPoint presentation to a live audience is really powerful. And public speaking is an excellent business development tool and it does absolute wonders for your credibility, your status in your industry. Unfortunately, public speaking isn't scalable because you can only be in one place at one time, all right? So, and, and you've got a business to run, you've got a recruitment business to run, right? So you're making placements and you're running your businesses and uh, some of you are managing people, leading people, you've got a business to run. So, um, you know, public speaking and running off around the country is not a really, really good idea for you. Well, a webinar, a webinar is just like giving that PowerPoint presentation, live PowerPoint present presentation, in front of a room full of people, but with a couple of major differences, okay? A couple of major differences. Firstly, um, <laughs> Richard said, she's louder though, Roy. 5 p.m. here, almost wine time. Nikki, help yourself to that wine. I wish I could join you, it's just too early in the morning for me. Um, Daniel's saying, I've watched a few and I love them, and I like what Richard says, where do I start? Okay, good guys, we're gonna get you to that point, all right? We are going to get to that point. So look, firstly, webinar campaigns are hugely scalable. They're able to reach hundreds, even thousands of prospects, okay? Secondly, your webinar audience can be anywhere in the world. They don't need to book a flight or a hotel to come and see you speak. Uh, all they have to do is turn on their computer. Thirdly, as the presenter, you don't need to spend time and money traveling around the country either. You can give your presentation wearing your Jimmy Jammies uh, while sitting on your couch at home. Um, no, I haven't got my Jimmy Jammies on, but um, <laughs> well, not today anyway. Um, I've got clothes on, right? So just hasten to add, not to freak any of you out. But you can give it wearing your, your pajamas. You can, you know, you can do it from wherever you want, from your office, from your home. Um, I would love to tell you you could do it from a beach, but without a hardwired. Uh, connection then uh, it's not great on Wi-Fi all right so it's the only thing I will tell you you won't be able to do it from a beach you could but the quality is probably not going to be that great um, but you can do it while sitting on the couch at home the webinar attendees are you guys at the moment will only see uh, your computer screen and hear your voice unless you prefer to turn your webcam on Okay, now you guys know you can do that, and I'm going to show you how to do that. But and, and finally, if you record your webinar, you can replay it over and over again to brand new audiences without doing any additional work. So you only have to research, write, create the webinar once. In fact, you could have multiple pre recorded webinars running every week while you're lounging by the pool sipping those cocktails. Now, that's what I call scalability, don't you? Um, now, there are many ways to do webinars. The most common is to simply share your computer screen with your attendees. So like I'm doing exactly here, all they get to see, your attendees, all they get to see are your PowerPoint slides. Uh, in this instance, I'm using a PDF. Um, and all they hear is your voice. Okay, And some webinar presenters choose to also have their webinars webcam enabled um, so the audience can see their face but disabling the webcam makes hosting a webinar much easier okay as it leaves you free to look after your notes or even read them straight off the page as I sometimes do um, but for some introverted people like me this is wonderful so I know a lot of you are really worried um, if some of the questions I get asked are you know well, I don't really want to go on camera well, look, I would advise you to do it. You know that I tend to do my Q and A's live to camera. I tend to do the training elements using PowerPoint slides. 
but I can switch it backwards and forwards from from the camera really really easily you know it, it doesn't make um, uh, you know, any difference to me. What I will tell you is the camera stuff, where you are able to engage live, and I'll you know show you an example of that later. But where you can do that, um, it's more engaging for your viewer. You know, it, it's kind of like it's the it, if you think about that live uh, PowerPoint presentation, public speaking, they see you and they see the slides. All right. So uh, look, really, really quickly, let's do this. We can. Um, uh, what can I do? So I just want to bring it back. I'm going to there. Look, see. So you can do camera. You can do live to camera. And when you do live to camera, if you focus in on wherever that light is, okay. So if you focus in on, I know it's not the greatest of shots because I'm, I'm uh, normally I have my camera up and lighting and all that kind of stuff. So this just gives you an example that's a camera stuff. If you look into the lens of the camera, it can be really engaging. If you look down, which is a big mistake, a lot of you know rookie presenters make, they'll, they'll look down into their screen, and you can see that I've broken the contact with you, all right? So that's not a great thing to do at all, right? So the best thing for you to do is talk to the camera, talk to the person, Imagine the person is there on, on the other end of that uh, that lens. Okay, that makes it so much more engaging. Let me get you back to the slides. Um, uh, <laughs> let's see if you can get those. Good. Okay, I think you're there. Let's have a look. I hope you're there, uh, Nikki. Looking too tanned for me. <laughs> Thank you. I'm not sure, Nikki. If I'm not sure if you're referring to me or whether you're referring to. Uh, my current slide showing, uh, uh, I was going to say a friend of mine, he's not a friend of mine, um, uh, on screen. Spain was good for you, Roy. It really was. Thank you, Richard. Bless you. Um, <laughs> I love those guys. Really good. Um, cool. Okay, listen, I'm so sorry. Let me, um, you know, I'm laughing. Um, <clears throat> okay. Good. Okay. I yeah. We've talked about the, the you know the difference between you, look. Essentially, if you're shy, do PowerPoint presentations. If you're not so shy, if you can get over the shyness, then I would do it to camera plus PowerPoint slides. All right. And I can show you. It's really. really I mean, I've shown you now. As I say, it's relatively easy to switch through, switch between the two. But um, you can see I have trouble with it. Right. A pro tip for you. A webinar, people ask me this, Roy, is a webinar a teleconference? No, a teleconference is just a phone call that lots of people can listen to. There are no visuals, there are no PowerPoint presentations. Um, webinars are much more powerful than teleconferences because they engage your audience's eyes as well as their ears. So if you have a choice, I'd always recommend a webinar rather than a teleconference. All right, I hope that kind of makes sense. Now, webinars create value. You probably want to do a webinar to uh, generate sales leads. Okay, some of you, in fact, let me know if there's anything else that you want to do with them. Um, let me know. But it's a really, really good thing to generate sales leads, more candidates, more clients, both. All right, but the key thing is you must remember. The principles of content sharing. First and foremost, you've got to provide your attendees with real value. They must get something out of the time that they're investing in your webinar. Now, you may think lecturing them for an hour about your recruitment company's services is value, um, but trust me, it isn't. All right. I, you know, I love you and I love your services, but if you just got a whole bunch of people on uh, a thing and all you did was sell what you do, that would be boring for them, okay? It's not what they, they, they signed up to. Now, if your webinar is a giant sales pitch, you're just going to irritate that audience. So you have to give them something that they, they really want, something that's useful, uh, actionable information that will help um, them in their, in their work, whether they're a candidate or a client, okay? Instead of pitching, I want you to do some research on your target prospects and find out what they're interested in. And what type of problems uh, do they worry about in their business? What frustrates them? What are the frequent, this is a really, really big tip for you. 
What are the frequent topics of discussion in your LinkedIn groups? Some of you I know have set up your own LinkedIn groups now, great. Others amongst you, you should be doing it. And if you haven't got your own LinkedIn group, then definitely you will be uh, belonging to others. But check out what the frequent topics of discussion in your LinkedIn group, because that will give you some massive, massive clues. What are people complaining about? What topics generate the most comments? They use that research to generate a short list of maybe three to five potential webinar topics that you can uh, cover. The next thing I'd get you to do is a quick, you know, perhaps message a, a couple of, a few dozen of your prospects uh, or group members, ask them which topic they'd be most interested in learning more about. The webinar success, the overwhelming, you know, like thing that I tell you, success of webinars starts with understanding your market, understanding your clients and candidates, all right? Understanding is the big thing. They'll tell you what they're interested in, you've just got to deliver it, okay? You've just got to deliver it. Now, for example, you might learn that many companies are looking for creative ways to cut costs at their shareholders' meetings uh, or their, you know, their annual conventions. So if you create and plan a webinar titled Amazing Corporate Events on a Budget, you're likely to get many people to sign up. Then when you present the webinar, make sure that you share plenty of solid, useful information, inside tips for cost cutting. And that was just one example, right? But basically every attendee is gonna feel that it was time well spent because they learned something valuable. People will give you time, but they wanna feel that they're getting something out of it. So avoid those big pitches. Unlike um, with a, a LinkedIn group discussion or a message campaign, um, with a webinar, you do get to include a pitch for your company at the end, all right? So, you know, unlike a, a, a you know, you get into a LinkedIn group discussion, you can't say, oh, by the way, and we were a fantastic company. I know some of you do try, but um, you don't want to be doing that, okay? But in a webinar, you can. Um, at the end, you can do a, you know, a pitch for your company and you can do a call to action around your recruitment services. Now, this works really, really well because once a webinar is finished, you've already earned their respect, their goodwill for sharing your amazing content. So a short pitch at that stage doesn't seem manipulative. It doesn't seem underhanded. Um, and uh, and also, since most sales um, sorry most webinars end with sales pitches these days, most people who sign up for yours will not feel you know blindsided or hoodwinked or whatever by you including one. Most people now, I think, get on a webinar. So today is a content webinar, so I'm not pitching anything at you. Um, but you know, on my sales webinars, I put a lot of free content out there, and I know people sign up for it. They know. At the end of that webinar, there's going to be some kind of presentation. Um, I always give people an opportunity to opt out on mine. You know, I say to them, look, this isn't for everybody. Uh, if, if the content was everything you're after and you're done, then great. See you later and thanks for coming. If you're really interested in taking it up to the next level, then hang out with me. I've got some, some, something I can, you know, some, some different tools that I can talk to you about. So, you know, that's a sales pitch. Um, we, we, we're going to talk in a lot more detail about how that could work for a recruitment business because you're not offering a product as such, but you are able to, I think, really subtly uh, present your services and they're you know, very definitely call to actions. Now, one popular tactic for webinars that will work in almost every business, all right, it, it, that I, you know, every business, including every recruitment business, is including case studies and success stories. So this generally involves telling the story of one company that succeeded in the marketplace and giving a step-by-step -step analysis of how they did it. Now, I've got to tell you, people love success stories and they love learning about what other successful companies are doing. Um, now, this works especially well if the product, you know, the service that you're selling is, is played a part in their success. So, for example, if you're a recruiter and you know, your service helped the business in the case study succeed, that becomes a natural segue into some kind of sales discussion for your service. Um, so, for example, today I showed you how XYZ Limited 
used our retained search service to grow its management team by 200%. If you'd like to explore how this solution could generate the same results for you, we'd like to set up a call with one of your accounts, one of our account specialists. We'll be reaching out to you in the coming days. Boom, all right? I, it's straight away, it's a, it's a pitch at the end of your presentation, but it's based off of a success story, all right? So look out for those, your case studies, your success stories, people very, very powerful, really, really useful. The types of webinars, generally there are two types. I hope I'm not going too quickly for anybody. Uh, Valerie, you're new to this, I know, I <laughs> really, really apologize. I'm flying through it because I know that I've got, you know what I'm like. In fact, the other guys know what I'm like. I've got a bag of content that I just want to give you. I want to give you loads of information. And I know that I've got to get you out of this uh, room within 60 minutes. So I'm going to keep going with it. If I'm going too fast for you, type up for me. Remember, you can always watch the replay of this afterwards. So if there's anything you're not sure about, any note you haven't taken, uh, watch the replay. You'll be able to, to, to get access to that. All right, so types of webinars. Two broad categories of webinars. The first type is for you. All right? It's designed primarily to build brand awareness and generate sales leads. Now, in this type of webinar, your goal is to impress the attendees so much with your knowledge and your expertise that they agree to a post-webinar meeting or phone call. You already have their contact information at this point, so you simply let them know someone from our company will be reaching out to you in the next couple of days to ask your thoughts on the webinar and discuss some of the ideas we talked about today. This webinar strategy is best for you, for recruitment companies and any company with high value, expensive type services, right? high ticket services, high ticket product. Um, the second type of webinar is designed directly to sell something. Now the goal there is to get attendees to pull out their credit cards and make a purchase immediately. This category of webinar, you, you've seen it, you've been on them, you know, you may have joined two five tribe as a result of watching one of these webinars. This category of webinar is popular for information products such as training or coaching programs like two five tribe, as well as other types of product. Now my view is that yours is the first one. You don't have to get people to whip out a credit card. It would be nice. Um, but you don't have to do that. What you can do is, first of all, just running the webinar, massive credibility for you, great positioning for you. Um, but at the end of it, your call to action could be, you know, we'll be reaching out to you in the next couple of days um, to, uh, to discuss some of the ideas we've talked about today and find out your feedback on the webinar. Now, if your webinars are getting big numbers, all right, we're going to go into that in a little while. If you're getting big numbers, you always can do that type of reach out with an email. If you're getting reasonable numbers, you know, reasonable numbers that you could physically phone, I really would encourage you phone the people that attended your webinars afterwards. You get great feedback, but immediately you engage in a conversation. So it's a good, valid business reason to call a client or a candidate. All right, so those are the two different, different types of webinars. Um, there is one other type of webinar as well, actually. There are also webinars that actually charge customers a fee to attend. I've done them. And this strategy works best when the webinar offers very valuable, very specialized information that people are willing to pay for upfront. Their money making techniques, career or business advice, self help are typical topics within this category. Now, aside from making a few bucks, another benefit of you charging for the webinar is that the registrants, and this is why I've done it before, registrants are much more vested when they actually have skin in the game, all right? The attendance rate skyrockets. I've really seen the difference with that. So, you know, if somebody's paid to turn up, they turn up. If somebody hasn't paid, they just register. And we know this as webinar you know, organizers, we know that, uh, you know, if you can get, uh, you know, I think I talk about the, the percentages, but if you can get a sharp rate of 35%, you're doing really well, really, really well. I tend to get somewhere um, around 50%, you know, sometimes as high as 60. So, but there are loads of techniques that uh, you can use to, to, to boost that, that, that uh, attendance rate. Um, free webinars, I will tell you, free webinars typically see attendance between 25 and 40%. Paid webinars can see attendance get as high as 80%. So um, that being said, most webinars offer their content for free. Uh, and then try to convert the attendees at the end. My advice to you, do them for free, all right? Don't 
charge them at this stage. Um, if you want to get into that strategy, let's talk about that one privately, but I wouldn't advise that for you guys at this stage, right? Now, is your recruitment business a good candidate, if you pardon the pun, for webinars? Um, I would say to you, yeah, knowing all of you, but you make that decision. So for a webinar strategy to make sense for your recruitment business, you generally have to have at least a few thousand potential customers, clients or candidates, right? This is because webinars are not a high response rate kind of tactic, all right? So um, you've got to have a few thousand potentials. I'm not talking about a few thousand turning up, but a few thousand on your database, on your CRM, on your email list, uh, on your social media channels, a few thousand that potentially you could reach. Because after all, you're going to be asking people to dedicate you know, 30 minutes, an hour of their time. And many people simply aren't willing to do that, no matter how much they'd like to hear what you have to say. So as such, you need a big enough audience uh, in order to, to market the webinar. Now, let me tell you, and I'm still with you, I'm not going too fast for anybody. Just do me a favor, just do a quick, like, hands up for me. Just say, hey, yes, Roy, we're getting you loud and clear. Um, uh, we're in, you know, whether you're enjoying it or whatever, but you're learning some stuff. So tell me you're learning some stuff. And look, I know some of you are really just itching to get into this and get into, but I want to lay these foundations for you. Hopefully, these foundations will make, actually not even hopefully, these will make your webinars just so much better than, you know, your so-called competitors, uh, the ones that they're going to try and do. You know, the reason why I brought this subject to you was I thought, hang on a second, I do webinars. This is what I do for a living. And I get great uh, results from it, great revenues from it. What can I do? And it's like, oh, my God, I could just show 2-5 Drive. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Nikki. Um, I'm just t show the two five tribe, uh, you know, show you behind. Let's lift the bonnet. Let's show you what I do. Exactly the things that I do. Thank you, Richard. Um, uh, good. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Good to good to see you in the room. Um, okay. Cool. So look, there are many many steps. Love that slide. Many steps in the webinar sign up funnel. Potential attendees. Thank you, Adam. Um, need to do the following six things. They need to open the email invitation. All right, so these, these are all the steps. They need to open an email invitation. They need to, number two, click the invitation link. They need to, number three, sign up at the registration page. They need to, number four, show up at the webinar. They need to, number five, stay for the whole webinar. And they need to, number six, convert, i.e. buy or sign up or, you know, agree to talk to you at the end. Now, don't worry if you haven't written those down. You know, I can always send those to you. But it's a lot of steps, okay? It's a lot of steps. And at each one, you will lose people. So in order to have anyone left after all that attrition, you need to start off with a decent pool of prospective attendees. Now, let me walk you through... Uh, if I can pull this up, let's have a go. Yeah, let me walk you through a representative uh, example of some typical numbers, all right? Um, now, I don't want you to be scared by these numbers at all. It's not, I'm not saying to you, you have to have 10,000 prospects. You don't, all right? I'm going to take you through these, so just bear with me. Consider, uh, you know, a recruitment business that's got a client candidate CRM database of 10,000 contacts. Now, that's a good size universe. I would advise ten send two rounds, so two separate email uh, campaigns to them marketing the webinar, and the emails. Those emails will average an, a, a, a fifteen percent open rate. All right, so fifteen percent open rate from that type of database. So now, if you think about it, ten thousand, you're down to three thousand prospects that even see the promotion on that webinar. Now, if you then get a 20% click-through on those emails, it's okay, can you, bear with me a second. So you've got an email, it's in your inbox, you've got to open it, right? Secondly, there's a link in there that takes you to uh, the you know, registration page. You've got to click on that. So we all look at a 20% click-through rate on the 3,000. Um, you're down to 600 prospects that make it to the registration landing page. Don't worry about too much about the terminology. It's basically uh, the email 
won't give them all the details on, on the webinar, the landing page, the registration page is the thing that will do that. So if there's only 600, where are we up to, right, 600 prospects that make it through to your registration page, now if that landing registration page converts well, all right, if it's good, and I'm going to teach you how to make it good, maybe 50% of the people will sign up. So 50% of the people that visit the page will sign up. Now from those, right, so that gets it down to 300. From, from those 300, you know, I told you I'm getting up to 50% that uh, turn up, 50, 60% turn up. But the standard is around 35%. Sometimes it's much lower, 25, 25%. But from those 300, only I'm going to, you know, show you for this illustration, 35% will attend the webinar. So that's about 100, 105 people from your webinar from a total possible pool of 10,000. Now, if you're new to webinar, webinars, that may not seem like a lot, right? You go, oh my God, what are you? you know, 105 is like we market it, it's 10,000, only 100 people. Don't be disappointed. Those are really, really good, strong numbers. Um, you, you should be pleased if you get 100 you know, attendees on your webinar. Solid, solid numbers. Um, but now, let's consider a recruitment business that only has a total universe of you know, total uh, CRM or whatever of 500 contacts. Even if they convert well, the same formula will only would only result in about three to five attendees. Um, is it worth all the effort? Well, only you can decide that. If you're selling, uh, you know, if your placement, your average placement fees, I don't know, if, uh, thousands, and I'm hoping that they are, but. You know, if your recruitment services are costing 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. And in fact, you know, don't even just think about one placement. Think about lifetime value of a client, lifetime value of a client. Um, you know, those figures are, are peanuts, you know, half a million, one million, whatever. It's like all relative to your different markets. But a client, a candidate could be worth that to you. The lifetime value of a client or candidate could definitely be worth that. So those remaining three to five prospects are hot leads. Then yes, it's worth it. All right. It depends on your recruitment business. It depends on the services that you offer. But the key point here is that webinars work best if you've got a large universe of potential clients. All right. I hope that makes sense. Now, for these same reasons, uh, recruitment businesses that that only operate in a, a very limited geographical area. Are less likely, um, um, uh, less likely to have success with webinars. All right. So, for example, a regional recruitment company that only provides candidates, say, in the city of Chester. Um, uh, hey, Daniel, uh, provides candidates in the city of Chester. They're going to have a much smaller universe of, of potential customers than a company that sells its recruitment services all over the country or you know internationally the smaller your prospect pool the faster you are going to run out of runway okay now <clears throat> planning your webinar right planning a webinar planning a webinar is like planning a fancy party it's like planning your own birthday party the longer you wait until the last minute to plan it the less likely it will be to succeed uh, write this down it takes about 4 weeks to prepare for and promote a quality webinar <laughs> See, that's me telling you how hard I work. If you know what you're doing, um, it takes about four weeks, all right, so to, to get ready for it. And, and why is that? Let me tell you. First, it takes time to uh, time and testing to hone in that topic that will most appeal to your prospects. Secondly, you've got to research, write, create, and produce your webinar content. Third, you're going to have to think about what your goal is for your webinar and plan. Your strategy and your call to action so at the end of the webinar your attendees become whatever you want them to be whether that's like signed up for something or uh, you know booked in for a call or a meeting or whatever you need to decide what that call to action is going to be but fourth and perhaps most importantly you must market and promote your webinar so people will show up you don't want to do all of that work and have only two people in your audience all right um, I'm, now I'm going to cover marketing promotion in detail in our next session together. Um, I may not do the Q and A. What I might do there is is do another training session, you know, another presentation like this, where I look at marketing and promoting these things because I've, you know, I've kind of like 
dip, been there, dip, done it, seen it, worn the T-shirt. So I really want to share that information with you. Um, cool. Um, now, look, if you procrastinate too much, you're not going to be able to do quality work on any of the four tasks that I've just told you. You know, take content, for example. Once you've decided on your topic, it takes time to research the information, collect your case studies, uh, organize your presentation, build the PowerPoint slides, and it takes time to practice. Then you should test the presentation in front of your friends uh, or your, you know, your colleagues and ask for their feedback and suggestions. You'll probably end up making small changes and tweaks all the way up until a day or two before the live webinar. Or like in my case, the minute before the live webinar. I do it all the time. Um, now what you don't want to do is get behind schedule and then have to slap together something that isn't your best work. All right? Remember, this is your showcase to your clients and candidates. So you don't want to come across as you know, like, oh my God, this person's really bad. They, you know, haven't prepared for it. Remember that your clients and candidates are really busy people. They're trusting you to make this webinar, you know, worth their time. So if you start at least a month out and you put the effort in, um, it will be, all right? So I'm going to show you what those steps to take uh, and when in our next session together. I want to move on to the final, final bit. Good, with I'm, I'm on time with this. I'm really pleased. Um, here are a few. Uh, this is the Ripper's tips and tricks. So I, I did this visual on my own. I bet you're impressed with that, right? Um, good. Okay. That's a great question. Actually, Richard just come out. How much is too much content? Well, probably Richard, what I'm doing on this one. Um, what I'll do actually is in the next session, Richard, I'm going to deal with that in terms of how much content should there be. Um, actually, on that, on the type of webinar that I'm talking about for your clients, for your candidates not much all right or, or not as much as you may imagine I don't want you to pack it with content what you need to do is make it the best content but really really golden nuggets so for example on today yeah I've got a you know an hour whatever but actually you know I could split this up into three or four different webinars in terms of the content I could take each of these and maybe turn it into four different webinars where you know the content is the key, the key piece. It's maybe twenty percent, thirty percent of the presentation, and then the rest is maybe Q and A. All right. So I'll talk about that structure in, in the next week, in the, in the next session that we do together. Um, but look, here are a few webinar tips and tricks that I've learned over the course of hundreds of webinars. But like many things in life, the best way for you to learn is by doing. So as soon as you feel that you're ready, jump in and try your first webinar. All right. This session will give you a good starting point and you'll keep improving the more experience you get. So look, let's just jump straight into these tips. Tip number one, make sure that you choose webinar topics that people really care about. Now this is critical. Choose a topic that adds real value, um, real value, and is worthwhile for your, your, your prospects to attend. Otherwise, no one's going to show up. We'll talk about how to pick that right top, or, you know, the right topics in our next session together. Number two, I want you to write out your entire talk track, the entire script, word for word, script it. Now, this may sound like a, a you know, oh God, why you just give me loads of unnecessary work, but trust me, it's worth it. You spent a lot of time and effort planning the webinar, getting people to show up. So you want to make damn sure that you deliver the message the right way. Don't leave this to chance, all right? Uh, otherwise, you'll end up like, like me, babbling, all right? So, yeah, script it. Um, and don't worry about, you know, sounding scripted. The most important thing is you're getting this information uh, out in an accurate way, all right? So in a really, really accurate way. There'll be a lot of um, thinking going on in your head during a webinar, so it's really easy to forget things, even your key message. Having it all scripted reduces your fear and your anxiety. If what you're going to say is written right in front of you, you'll be more relaxed, even if you don't use the script. And that's the key thing. I've done that. I've turned up for live events and I've had my notes with me, not use them, but because I've got them and they're there, it just makes me more confident in terms of what I'm um, uh, presenting. Um, number three, write the way you speak. Right? Don't use fancy words in the script unless you actually speak that way. Most people use small words, lots of contractions, and sometimes incomplete sentences. So sentence fragments are fine. All right? Don't worry about um, you know, 
uh, messing it up. People, you know, want to hear you and hear you real, right? They'll kind of like, I suppose, I, I don't know. They'll, they'll, sometimes I, I'm, I mean, I do make a lot of mistakes, but the feedback that I get is, oh God, you know, Roy's really, you know, it's endearing. People think, oh, well, if Roy's making mistakes, it's cool for me to make mistakes, and it is. Um, we don't have to be, you know, what is it, word perfect and script perfect. We do make mistakes. We're human. Number four, practice, practice, practice. Now, you know the old joke, how do you get to Wembley Stadium um, or Carnegie Hall or Sydney Opera House? Um, practice, practice, practice. Pretend like you'll be giving this webinar in Wembley Stadium, all right? So the more you practice, the more confident and relaxed you'll be. It's important to practice so the words seem like you're just talking, not reading especially. Sorry, not reading. Um, uh, if you're going to, 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 especially actually if you're going to read word for word from a script, the more you rehearse, the more natural it will sound. And you can ask a friend to listen to you over the phone and see if she can tell that you're you know, reading a script. Um, it's a good way. Or record yourself and you know, listen to it. I think you'll probably be, as I am, your harshest critic. So uh, I always try and get somebody else to, uh, to listen to me and give me some feedback. Um, big tip for you, use a professional microphone. Um, the built-in mic on your laptop or your computer is fine for Skyping with your mates, but probably, I would say, to inadequate for this type of use, professional use. Upgrade to an external mic made specifically for webinars. So, um, you know, often you'll see me, I sometimes use a headset with a, you know, a, um, a chin mic. Sometimes I use a clip-on Lavalier mic. Um, I'm talking to you here using uh, my, my favorite mic, which is the Yeti Blue. Uh, and all of these kind of resources, by the way, I'll, I'll kind of post up somewhere for you. I'll get D to put a sheet together. But I use a, a microphone called the Yeti Blue. It's a USB um, uh, studio condenser microphone and what that means is it plugs into your laptop all right it's a really really good thing to do but the sound um, I'm, I produce all of my podcasts on this on recruiters live lounge I do all of my interviews on this um, and it's just a really rich sound if I do the uh, you know the other um, you know the microphone that's included on my laptop even even using Apple when I use my Mac uh, it's not it's good, but it's not brilliant. It's not as good as this, right? And then there are better, better mics that you can do. Now the Yeti, you know, some of you uh, may be wondering, it's it, I, off the top of my head, I think it's about 50, 60 quid, but I will check that out for you on Amazon. Um, sometimes even less if you can get it, you know, find them on sale somewhere. It's a really, really good microphone. There's other ones. Uh, Technica do a really good one, and Heil. H-E-I-L is almost like the daddy of microphones. I love it. That's where I'm kind of heading for. I'm looking for one for Christmas, all right? So professional microphone, it'll make a big difference. Um, step number six or tip number six, use webinar, uh, sorry, yeah, use professional software for hosting your live webinars. Now, I use uh, this webinar here has been brought to you with, um, some software called Webinar Jam Studio, all right? Now, I love it. Uh, you know, I really, really like that. I, I do love it, and, uh, yeah, and I've been using it, actually, for about two or three years. There are a number of live webinar solutions out there, and I've tried them all, I will tell you. Um, GoToWebinar was almost considered the gold standard up until about two, three years ago. It was the only choice for people like me that wanted to run uh, webinars like this but unfortunately it's also the most expensive um, uh, now you can try to save a few bucks because uh, you know with one of the other cheapies there are cheaper cheaper options but you might end up paying for it later um, I would say to you you know think I mean again I'll, I'll post up some links to different ones that you can do I love webinar jam studio um, there are also things like webinar ninja uh, loads and loads and loads of different ones. lead pages as well. You can also do do one on lead pages. I know some of you have got lead pages on my recommendation. Um, there is a facility. The reason, let me just tell you really quickly, the reason why I like Webinar Jam Studio, this chat function is built into it. The marketing is built into it. Um, uh, and um, it, it, it's just brilliant. There's nothing else really, to be honest with you, that touches it. It costs about $400 a year 
in my opinion oh sorry uh, go to webinar uh, you can't do the actually you can do the camera thing now but mostly that's powerpoint presentation um go to webinar will cost you thousands for the year all right and it depends on size of your business the number of attendees and all that kind of stuff it just gets very very complicated trust me i used go to webinar i was a you know really firm customer of them i loved it i sorry i liked using it i didn't like paying as much as i did for it but um i can talk to you about these different things right tip number seven tip number seven roy invite someone to co-host the webinar with you all right so um when two people are presenting a webinar together it often runs a lot more smoothly so you know on this one d's not here two people can divvy up the work so one person can focus on the slides and presenting while the other person can moderate the chat organize the questions facilitate troubleshoot pop out for a coffee help and just chime in once in a while with an observation or a rehearsed ad lib all right no d doesn't do rehearsed ad libs um, but plus with two hosts your webinar will seem a little bit more legit make it less likely that your attendees will wonder if you're sitting at home wearing your flip-flops I haven't got flip-flops on today um, but two basically you know if you're nervous I, I actually do like doing um, two so you've seen me on the recruiters live lounge when you're doing that type of thing you get a bit of banter going between two people so uh, that's an interview but actually you can always get you know in, in the case of uh, some of you uh, either do it with a colleague uh, or you can invite a strategic partner to do a, a co-host with you all right so something i've been involved in before so loads and loads of opportunities it's just it takes the pressure off one person all right particularly in the beginning when you're getting used to doing these webinars getting somebody to co-host with you will help all right oh by the way anyone wants me to help them co-host their first webinar i'd love to all right so just reach out man i'd love to be involved in your webinars to clients or candidates or whatever um so yeah you know i'm, I'm up for that if you're up for that um number eight prepare questions ahead of time really really key thing at the end of your webinar when you open up to questions from the audience it's awkward if no one asks anything it's happened to me right empty room so i suggest that you always have a few questions ready to go now you know when i say i'm joking when i say empty room it, you could have a completely full room but sometimes people just i don't know you know maybe the contents kind of answered it all for them maybe they're just shy some people come into a webinar and they never ever type a comment um you you guys might some of you might be in here doing that and i know that you know some two five tribe members don't get actively involved in the discussion because they just they're interested in the training they're interested in the notes and all those kinds of things and they want to focus in on on that rather than the chat some of you love the chat and i love the chat um just horses for courses so many uh you know webinar hosts even uh, you know sorry most people that i know try and prepare one or two questions ahead of time so that um you know you're not left kind of like f f floundering all right um, now some some hosts even act like they've, they've come from the audience it's up to you whatever you want to do but remember people like to feel as though they're participating in something that's popular and vibrant um, if they get a sense that there are only a few people in the webinar they won't come back all right so it's really really important that you you know if you just turn around and go oh any questions no there are none okay well thanks ever so much John to turn <laughs> I'm just like John's not going to want to rush back to, uh, to to get to you but again, I'm going to cover that off in next the next session that I do. I will cover that off. Is what happens if you only get one person or two people to turn up? There is an opportunity in there as well. All right. Number nine, plant the questions you really, really want to answer. Now, whether you have a full house or a handful of attendees, you always want to make sure that you get your recruitment business and your services promoted at the end of the webinar. So, an easy way to do this is to plant or script a few questions about your company, about the services, to make it seem as though an audience member submitted the question. And that way you can talk about your company, about services without seeming pushy. So, you know, John's asked, how does a retained search work? Or, you know, uh, what, what kind of, wh where do you go to find candidates? That kind of thing. So when you get a question like that, sorry, when you have a question like that, pre 
written, you know exactly what you'll do. It's a chance, an opportunity for you to sell and present your company. Number 10, always record your webinars. I'm using Go, uh, sorry, I'm using uh, Webinar Jam. Webinar Jam is a skin for Google Hangouts. Google Hangouts, just, you know, I don't want to go all technical on you today, but Google Hangouts is linked to YouTube. So uh, it will always record your, your webinar, unless you've done something drastically wrong. Um, it, it is fairly foolproof in that it will always record your webinar. So this allows you to go back and, and listen and watch the webinar to um, self-critique. Um, you can make a list of the things that you could do better next time. And then recording, this is the key thing, also lets you rerun your webinars again and again. Brings me on to point number 11, try to keep your webinars, you know, dateless or evergreen. In other words, I want you to keep out any reference to the time of day. I do this all the time. The day of the week, the date, the seasons, the holidays, the weather, your Christmas tree, I don't know, Halloween, anything else that give away the fact that you recorded this webinar six months ago and you're replaying it, try and keep those references out, all right? This goes for what you say verbally as well as the text on your slides. If your webinar is evergreen, you can record it and run it again over and over again. This is really key, all right? Really, really key. Um, number 12, edit if you have to. Sometimes you, you want to make a few edits, and I do cut out something stupid you said uh, or add information. <clears throat> you can use any editing software to do this, um, like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. Um, but those are expensive, all right? Those are expensive. If you haven't got those, I'm not saying to you, you don't have to go out and get those at all. Um, you can actually edit in YouTube. There's a very simple um, YouTube editor. It's free. Um, I use a program called Camtasia. It's simple, it's easy to use um, because it's designed as a screen rec recorder. So I use Camtasia when I'm doing relatively complicated, you know, sort of editing. But for the majority of time, I actually just use YouTube Simple Editor, editor to uh, trim the front and back end of my uh, webinars that I do. So you could use either of those. Number 13. Um, uh, good, okay. Good, okay. Um, Daniel's asked that question. If you do have an empty or a near empty room, how can you demonstrate a busy room? Um, if you've got, D Daniel, first of all, um, there are lots and lots of different softwares available. There's a company called Stealth Seminar, sorry, Stealth Webinar, Stealth Seminar. One of those, I, again, I'll find the link and I'll post it up. Um, it, it, it kind of can s simulate uh, big groups, etc. Um, I, I would again. I'm going to try and deal with that question. I think in more detail the next time uh, I see you. All right. So, or well, sorry, the next time I'm, I'm, I'm with you guys live, because um, there's different things that you can do. Um, even in web, webinar jam as well, webinar jam studios, things that you can do. Um, I don't need to worry about that bit too much. Uh, this, you know, in this session, I will deal with it in, in the next session. <clears throat> okay. Um, number th thirteen: Plan and implement a strong call to action at the end. A rookie mistake that I see a lot is that a good webinar just fizzles out at the end instead of finishing strong. So do not, you know, don't don't end the webinar by just mumbling to yourself and saying, "Well, um, I guess that's it. Uh, bye." A strong finish needs to be well planned. It needs to be compelling. It needs to be definitive, and it needs to be rehearsed. Right? Not something that I'm very good at. If your goal is to sell uh, recruitment services then and there, have your sales pitch ready to go and say it. But don't end in a wishy-washy puddle of indecisiveness. Right? You must practice these strong endings. Number fourteen. Learn the webinar software ahead of time. Make sure you know how to work everything, what to click, when to click it. A little practice goes a long way. So you don't want to be using your webinar software for the first time during an actual live webinar. I suggest doing a full-on live trial run to test everything, right? And I'll help you with that. I will help you with that. Um, number 15, use automated... Uh, email software to simplify your email campaigns. Now, when you're running campaigns, you need an email system to tell people about your webinar, uh, to send them a link to the landing page, remind them it's coming up, and then follow up after the webinar. 
So, um, you know, Webinar Jam Studio's built, built in email capabilities. Um, there's loads and loads of different things you do. My, my, you know, my, my favorite, actually my favorite uh, automated email software, the one I've just transferred over to, actually one I've trans trans transferred over to, is Active Campaign. If any of you have not seen Active Campaign, it's really, really good. Um, some of you I know, I, I used to use Aweber, that was the first one that I used, really, really good, very robust. Uh, most recently, I've been using Get Response, but there's loads. Mailchimp, Infusionsoft, very, very expensive, but considered the Rolls Royce. Active Campaign is the pretender to Infusionsoft's uh, kind of reign, and it's it's actually taking a lot of business off them right now. So they're they're pretty good, but for less expensive, more basic option, you can all, always look at Aweber or Mailchimp. Um, they're both highly, highly recommended. All right, but we'll talk more about the email software and how to use it specifically to promote your webinar in our next session. The final, final tip for you. All right, so we are coming to a close. Look at that for strong ending, um, <laughs> Richard. Boom! Um, I love that. Let's broadcast that one. Um, uh, number sixteen. Market your webinars on steroids. You've got to market the heck out of these webinars. The single most demoralizing mistake people make is not getting enough attendees to show up. And this doesn't have to happen. We'll dig into marketing and promoting webinars to draw maximum attendance in the next session. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do to like boost your numbers and forget about those industry averages. You know, let's get you up to um, the 50%, the 80% turn ups, right? The, Really simple things that you can do to make sure that happens. All right, so look, um, hardest part of webinar campaigns. I, you know what? Creating, practicing, delivering great webinar content is not the most difficult part of, of webinars. Um, uh, it's actually the fun part. The hard part is simply getting people to show up. So, uh, you know, it's that, it's that promotion thing. Now, if you can master this skill, you'll be a webinar superstar and no time at all and that's the stuff that i'm going to give you right we are coming to a close god i brought it in on time just what you learned today you learned how webinars work why they work how to create your own webinar campaign and 16 of my proven webinar tips and tricks to ensure that your future webinars rock all right 